Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today we're going to talk about budgeting, growth, health, all things. I'm going to try to make this a monthly occurrence. I know I kind of fell off the bandwagon last year and that tends to happen to me at the end of the year. So we'll see what happens now that I'm back at the beginning. Got some coffee. Mm. Oh, in my Eeyore mug, I got this a million years ago at the Disney store in Massachusetts. I think I have two of them too. Okay, so growth. That is my word of the year. I want to grow not in size. I want to grow more mature financially. I want to take control of my bills as like I started last year. I want to grow my YouTube channel. I just want to grow. So I chose that as my word of the year for 2022. I have a little sheet down here. Um, so I thought we're going to include in these monthly videos or chats also some other things besides money. But we'll start with the money. Um, I have a couple, I'm trying to get my bearings here. I got a couple side hustles going on. Let me take out my dollars and all my money and stuff. Okay, so I keep everything in this little thing, folder. I think it's a travel document holder. I got it at Target. It was a couple bucks, but irrelevant. Okay, so I do some side hustles. We all know that. I sold some stuff on Facebook Marketplace and I earned in January $165. So that is this money right here. Let's make sure. Right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 20, 40, 50, 65. 165 in cash. This money is going to go in with some money that I already had. I think it's a 75, two, four, five, six, 75. Yes. And I'm keeping track of it. I'm not hundred percent sure what this money is going to be for, but we'll get a total here. Um, could be for my trip coming up to Canada soon. It might, I might save it towards the end of the year. I'm not really sure, but now I have saved in this envelope, because some of it rolled from December. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 200, 10, 20, 30, 40. So I have $240 saved for an unknown something. It will get used. I have a couple ideas. Potentially my trip that I'm going on in the end of March, beginning of April. So I have 240. Then I have my $1 bills. I got 18. Yes, $18. I'm not counting keeping track, but for right now we have this little holder here and I'm just gonna add dollars. I'm not keeping track of the dollars. I'm not writing them down. I'm just adding. So I have no idea what I have in there, but these are gonna get saved till the end of the year for sure. Um, so whenever I have cash, what I've been doing for the ones, what I've been doing is taking out every two weeks, a hundred dollars in cash. And I use that cash for coffee. If I want to go to a coffee place or if I want to pick up something, a snack, eat out, whatever, it's miscellaneous monies for me to have on hand to utilize instead of swiping my card all the time. At the end of the two week period, um, I take that money, I put any, and I don't spend my $1 bills. And then I roll that money in probably, usually I just roll it to the next week. Um, or save it for like a Costco run or something like that. Because I've been getting gas with my card, I get points for that, and groceries I've been ordering online, so it doesn't make sense to pay cash. And I'm in my area, there's been some restrictions on cash usage, so there's that. And then I take my coins. I got this, it's from the Discovery Channel, little jar, and it keeps track of my money when I put it in here. So right now in here, I have $15.65 
and it's just quarters, dimes, and nickels, no pennies. The pennies are in a separate jar. So whenever I have change in my purse, I put it in here. So the last month, I was able to put $4.10. We're just going to see at the end of the year where all this takes us, right? Okay. Now, my biggest is Christmas, my Christmas fun. I'm recycling this Christmas envelope from last year. But what this is all about, this envelope right here, is I'm trying to take money and gift cards that I earn on Ibotta and Fetch and putting them in here or documenting. So this started in December because I did cash out in November. In December and January, I was able to take $25 from Ibotta and I had it sent to my bank account and I took it out of the bank. So I have $25 in cash from Ibotta. And what they are, I'll tell you here in a second. And Fetch, I have $50 in my Amazon account as gift cards already for shopping. So with Fetch and Ibotta, both of them are shopping apps. With Fetch, you scan your receipts and you earn like 25 points per receipt. So you don't add up real fast that way. But if you buy certain items that are on special, like one time I got 5,000 points because I spent $30 at CVS. Okay. Um, you can cash them out, I think as little as $5 on the Fetch app. On Ibotta, what you do is if you're gonna go to a store, like I go to Target, and this week I needed some um, protein powder that I use when I bake with my keto. There was a $5 reward. So I clicked it on the reward, I scanned it, I scanned my receipt, and I got $5 back. So I'm almost getting ready to pull another $25 from Ibotta. Now I will have both linked below. If you want to get on board with this, Fetch will give you, I think right now it's 3,000 points. So that's $3 just for signing up. And I think I get 2,000 and I'm not sure what Ibotta is offering, but I'll, both links are in the description box. I just wanna see how much I can collect for the year for Christmas. So it'll be from between now and, I typically start Christmas shopping in September, but I wanna see how much I can collect just from free money. It's free money, guys. Plus, I will pick up receipts on the ground and throw them away. So why not scan them before I toss them? I'm just saying. Um, also, another side hustle that I have, I didn't, well, it's my part-time job, is the Schottenstein Center. And I typically use that income for my Costco runs. And I'll tell you how that works. So this paycheck, last Friday, I received $95. I have everything written down. So I received $95 paycheck, that's for two weeks, minimum wage, like $9.20 an hour. Went to Costco last night to stock up on some keto stuff and I spent $92. So that Schottenstein money is my Costco stock up money. I needed trash bags and then I got some keto snacks and some sugars and things like that. So I spent that $92, but that was not out of my paycheck. So I do my budgeting a little different because I have multiple sources and income streams happening. But I wanted to share, I'm so excited for this Christmas challenge to see how much I can save up. So I think 50, I think I'll stay, stop at $100 in Amazon gift cards because I think that's a good amount. And then I'm gonna maybe get some, um, like Ulta, because for my niece, and maybe, I don't know, Kohl's, Target, probably a lot, I'll get some Target gift cards as well. So anyway, um, so that's how that went. Now, on my bills, in the month of January, my credit card bills, I have two credit cards, so I was able to pay, technically I was able last year to pay off three, but then I had a medical emergency with my cap, and I had to use one of my cards, so I have two to pay off. And my total on my two credit cards is $7,791.34 I'm sorry, $7 on those two cards. I was able to pay $1,301. So right now my balances are $6,490.34. Now, obviously at the beginning of next month, interest will kick in, those balance will go up. 
my goal is to just keep paying, just keep funneling money to these two cards. So I don't think $1,301 is bad to be able to pay towards some credit card debt. So I did that. Um, once I get these credit cards paid off, which I'm very confident that I will be able to do this year in 2022, these cards will be gone. Then I'm going to start doubling down, doubling down on my car payment and stashing money in my savings. So that's my next goal. But for right now, I'm doing this in very small little bits and pieces. Pay off these two credit cards is my goal right now. And then pay off my car, build my savings. My condo, you know, it's a long term goal. But once my car is paid off, I can start at least making one or two extra mortgage payments a year but right now I sit on a fair amount of equity where I live uh, just because of the circumstances around when I purchased this condo so I'm comfortable with what I owe so that's money oh wait is that money oh it is not money last thing gas so when I did my budget last month I way underestimated the amount of money I will be spending on gasoline so um i budgeted for 60 dollars, and i think i spent over 90. so for february i think i put in a hundred dollars in my budget and last night i bought gas and i spent 25. i didn't fill up that was a little under a half it was a little under a half a tank but we're expecting a storm so i went ahead and topped up so for february so far, I need to write that down. So far in February, I have spent $25 on gas. So I way underestimated that. Groceries was pretty spot on. Um, I budgeted like 200, I think I came in at like 180. And then the 92 is definitely from a different source of income and that's Costco, which I do that about once a month and buy stuff that I can really only get at Costco. And I can show you some of the keto finds the next time I go. If I can find a morning to go that I can, there's not a million people there. That's what was his, always so hard. All right, now we're done talking about finances. Let's move on to health. Health is another big goal that I have this year and getting control. I turned 51 last October. I'll be 52 this year. And, you know, things are starting to happen. So... I definitely made sure I was caught up on all my vaccines, about cutting my finger off, got my tetanus shot for that. I'm triple vaxxed with the uh, COVID vaccine. Um, I have my flu, my pneumonia, I have all of that. I am fully caught up on all my vaccines, even got my first shingles. I go back March 8th, 9th, March 9th to get my last shingles vaccine. So I'm done with that. I do need to schedule a mammogram this year soon. That's the next thing. I was going to schedule it, but with the COVID vaccines, it has to be so many weeks after. And I just let, I decided that COVID was more of a risk to me than my mammogram at this specific point in our lives and where we're at. So I need to schedule a mammogram. Um, I also had my colonoscopy when I turned 50, so that is taken care of. Um, the one thing, and I will tell you, I have been on the keto lifestyle since June 5th of 2017. So I'm going on five years. Last year, for almost a solid year, I was stuck. I was stalled. I stopped losing. I really wasn't gaining too much. A couple I think when I was sent home for COVID and started working from home, I gained about five pounds, but I was pretty just stuck at this weight loss. And so I belong to a keto group on Facebook and the woman that runs it, uh, Christy Sullivan, was talking about some research that she had read and done that potentially when you get to a, pla a long-term plateau, I don't mean a week or two, but like a year or a month, you need to switch something up. So I flipped i'm doing now high protein so higher protein less fat still zero carb sugar like no sugar down here very low carb so the only thing i did is i switched the fat and uh, protein around and i started that in november of last year and i have currently lost 20 pounds since last november and in january i lost five pounds so it's definitely slowed down well 
I mean, November, December, January, in three months, I lost 20 pounds. Five of it, so about seven and a half in December, November, seven and a half December, and five in January, if I had to guess the race, it doesn't matter. So I'm staying true to my path. I'm still doing my keto. I still don't eat sugar. I do not cheat. Um, I get a lot of questions on what, ben, you know, what keeps me motivated, and it's obviously health. It's my diabetes. I mean, I guess it's not obvious, but for me, it's my health. It's my diabetes. I want my sugar under control. And when I hit menopausal, premenopausal, whatever, my endocrine system went nuts. And I had to start taking an insulin at night along with my weekly medication that I take. And that really, it, it really made me sad. And I was, you know, talking to my cousin and we're like, it's okay. It's it's part of this menopause and I've had to get over that mental block. So now I take a shot at night and it is a long acting insulin and now my, my diabetes numbers are in line and I feel better. And that's the thing, like I feel better. That's what keeps me motivated. Um, and then also with the hormonal stuff, I did ask my doctor and we upped, I take Alexapro, I guess we're being transparent and to help with the emotional roller coaster of this menopausal thing, and that's helping a lot as well. So look at us. Um, so this is all not natural. I mean, I used some help because it was it was rough there at the beginning of this perimenopausal thing. But I have that all under control now, and yeah, I'm pretty happy. I can tell when I add too many fats into my diet because my the scale stops moving. Again, I'm not gaining any weight, but I may go a couple days without, and that's fine. I do track it because for me. Now, the next step I need to do is schedule my eye exam. Being diabetic, I must have my eyes examined every month, every year. So February, I'm due, plus I can tell that my prescription has changed. I'm kind of struggling a little bit to see. So there's that. Oh, I also scheduled a dermatologist appointment in March um, to check. It's an all over, it's called a body check. And I believe it's covered by most insurances at a, as a preventative. But I will go in, put a gown on, and she will, he, I don't know who I'm seeing, he or she will check all my skin. Um, I am a product of the 70s and 80s, pre-sunblock. I was a swimmer. I was out in the sun all the time. So you see all these little red splotches and stuff on my skin. A lot of this is sun damage that I just now have to treat. It's there. There's nothing I can do to reverse it, but I need to have it checked. I have a you know a couple little splotches here and there. Just have them looked at, and that really should be done once a year. So I scheduled it for March, and I, we talked about my diabetes is better, so I'll go this month. It's been three months since I started all this new medicine or started the new medicine for my diabetes. So I will go and get my A1C checked and hopefully it is back down into the normal range. So there is our January financial health life update for you and where I'm at. Hey, that was a page and a half for guys. So I hope, I hope if you're out there and you're in my age group, my demographics tell me we're all around the same age that you're taking care of your health too. Get your, get your exams done. I mean, it's, it's important. You know, we're at that age in life where things are happening and stuff is not where it's supposed to be and all of that. And you know, we just got to roll with it. And there's nothing wrong with if you're having an emotionally hard day, take something, get your doctor to help you seek out help. Don't suffer in silence because that is just not okay. It's according to me, what the heck, you know, I am no doctor. I am no financial advisor. I am just telling you what I am doing and what is working for me. I, that's the only expertise I can tell you that I have is trial and error, just doing it, living the life. So that is everything. I'm, I'm on track. Hopefully if I can stay at this pace to be paid, to have my debt paid off by August is what I'm hoping. I'm kind of shooting for August. September would be okay. December would be ideal. If I could get this paid off this year, I would be so happy. Because also I need to buy an air conditioner. So I have to save up for that. So I'm gonna be taking on this other debt 
mm, but we're not gonna talk about that now. It's un, it's inevitable, but I'm hoping to save up for it. Maybe that's what the envelope money is gonna go towards is my new air conditioner that I have to buy. I don't know, but I appreciate you and all your support on this channel because it does help me save money and helps me earn money to spend money on hauls and things to share with you. So you have a great day and I will talk with you later.